ever known one of those situations where one person can look at something and learn from it, and another person looks at it and they see absolutely no lessons whatsoever? And how much more true is that in relationships? We're going to talk about that today from Proverbs chapter 12. Hey guys, and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk, and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. And guys, if you appreciate this content, make sure at some point to hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell to all, so that you don't miss any future videos. We would love to have you as part of our family. Okay guys, let's get into the text. So we are in Proverbs 12, and we're only covering four verses today. I really am trying to make these videos shorter. Uh, once again, let me know in the comments. You know, I enjoy being able to go in depth with you guys, but that tends to make the, well, medium depth. Remember, I'm keeping this medium. I'm not going surface level. I'm not going super deep, but I'm kind of hitting that middle ground, I hope. Um, but I enjoy going more in depth, but it does mean the videos are longer. So I'm trying to do just a few verses this week. So let's get into this, but let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts on that. So verse 12, or, or uh, chapter 12, verse 1, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Now remember, discipline means you, you do something because it needs to be done, not because you feel like it. Uh, there's a quote that went around on Facebook not long ago that I really appreciated. It said something to the effect of, you don't need motivation when you have discipline. You know, and that's true because you're not always going to feel motivated to do something. You're not always going to want to do something. But discipline means you do it anyway because it needs to be done. So whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Clearly, this is somebody who is seeking to better themselves. But he who hates reproof is stupid. And reproof means correction. It means when somebody calls you out on something, you know, that's never been more true than on Facebook and social media in general right now, right? Somebody says something on Facebook, somebody else tries to correct them. And that just starts this big, long argument where everybody's just trolling. Now, sometimes the troll is the one that was trying to do the correcting to begin with. And sometimes it was an honest conversation and then people start trolling, but whatever the case, right? It's very clear on any social media platform, uh, need I mention the cesspool that is that little chirping bird, right? I mean, any social media right now, and you see this played out. God help you if you try to tell somebody that they misrepresented something or that something is not accurate. Uh, and if you do that, by the way, make sure you do it in a loving way and make sure you know what you're talking about so that you are not the fool. But right, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Those two go hand in hand. But he who hates reproof is stupid. And, you know, it's kind of funny sometimes, you know, I'll use the word stupid around certain people like, oh, pastor said a bad word. Well, there's a lot worse words than that in scripture, but here it is right here in Proverbs. Um, but Proverbs 9, 8 also talks about how when you, when you, rebuke a wise man, right? I'll, I'll put the actual scripture down here, but I'm trying to do this one from memory. If you rebuke a wise man, he just becomes more, more intelligent, right? He just learns even more. And that's true. Somebody that's wise knows how to take instruction, see what's real and what's not, throw out the stuff that's not, but keep the truth, right? In general, if somebody is criticizing you, there's a grain of truth in there somewhere. Not always. But quite often, I would say the majority of the time, if somebody's criticizing you, there is some small amount of truth that they have picked up on, and they may be twisting it, they may be blowing it out of proportion, but there's probably some truth in there that you need to hear. A wise man grows even more wise when he's rebuked. We see here, he who hates reproof is stupid. So there you go. Now, Remember, the Proverbs are general truths, so the next few verses don't necessarily go together, but I think they're put together for a reason. And remember, the, uh, Solomon is writing the Proverbs primarily to his son or sons. So once again, that's why the relationship examples are female. So we're going to see that in a minute. But the inverse would also be true. If you're a female reading or listening, you would say the same thing about maybe a husband, right, that we're getting into in a moment. So verse 2, 
a good man will obtain favor from the Lord, but he will condemn a man who devises evil. So God is in charge. He is just and he is in charge. So a good man, somebody who tries to do right, is going to find favor with God. A man who devises evil, a plotting, scheming person, is going to stand condemned before God. Now, ultimately, we know that doing good is not enough to get into heaven. We have to be perfect. Since we can't be perfect, we need Christ to pay for our sins and take away our sins and give us his righteousness, the great exchange. But in general, the Lord does bless people that choose to do right. It may not always be the ways that we want, but He does bless them. And people that are devising evil, they typically fall to their own traps eventually. It may not seem like it sometimes, but they do. Verse 3, a man will not be established by wickedness. Now, what does it mean to be established? We use that word a lot, but what does it mean? Well, you know, uh, one, you could just look it up in the dictionary, but two, you have that concept of establishment, right? That's a huge buzzword anymore, especially with all the rioting going on right now during the coronavirus pandemic. Although, for the most part, the riots are done except in a few cities, um, and I'm not getting into the politics of that right now, but there's still some rioting in a few places, but by and large, that is, is passed at this point, and I'm thankful. But a man will not be established by wickedness. Establishment means something that is firmly planted, something that is hard to get rid of. That's why people don't like the establishment, right? A man will not be established by wickedness. In other words, he's not going to be secure. And then to further drive this point home, the second half of verse 3, but the root of the righteous will not be moved. So it's that idea of a picture, or sorry, the idea of a tree, the picture of a tree where the roots go down deep and wide, you know, especially down here in the south, you know, we have trees that have really big roots. And when, when hurricanes come through, if they do manage to knock them down, they take a huge chunks of earth with them and the roots are, you know, just as tall as some trees sometimes, right? It's not easy to knock over a well-planted tree. The root of the righteous will not be moved. See, when we choose to do right, in general, God will bless us. Again, it may not be the way that we want or the way that we think, but God does generally bless those who choose to do right. And now coming on the heel of these discussions, again, these don't necessarily there's, there's not necessarily a tie-in between the verses that I just read and this one, but I think it's obvious Solomon is pointing his son toward this verse with some of these, as well as these are just general truths that he, want his, that he wants his son or sons to know. So verse 4, and this is, a, this is a commonly quoted verse. So verse 4, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. Now, if you're a king or a queen, why do you wear a crown? What is the crown, right? It's the thing that you want to show off to everybody. And why? To prove your status. Well, if you have a wife who is being likened to a crown, that means a wife that you are proud of, that you are proud to show off. And her existence and the way that she exists demonstrates the good relationship that you have and what a wonderful person she is. You want to display her, not in the weird, evil, possessive type sense, but in the sense of, I am proud this is my wife. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones, right? And if your bones have no strength, if the, the picture there is if your bones were rotted from the inside, right? You, you go to step and your leg breaks. You go to lean on something and your arm breaks because your bones are just rotten, right? She or But she who shames him is like rottenness in his bones. See, this is why, well, this is why Solomon's writing this, but this is also why it is so important to choose your future spouse wisely. So if you are young and single, I strongly encourage you not to date just for the sake of dating. Date with a view toward marriage. So if you want to, if you want to date with a view to marriage, that means that as you make initial impressions of somebody that you might be considering dating, do you need to find them attractive? Yes. 
but attractiveness only goes so far, right? I mean, beauty is vain. If you don't believe me, go to one of the stores that all the old people hang out on a Wednesday, especially usually. I, I worked in a grocery store. I don't know what it is about Wednesday, but especially on Wednesday. Go hang out in one of those stores and tell me how many of those women are beautiful, right? Beauty doesn't last forever. So if you want to be happy, if you want to be blessed in your marriage and therefore your life, you need to look for someone based on their character and whether you are truly compatible and ultimately whether God is in this relationship more than their physical attractiveness. Now, do you need to find them attractive? Of course. I'm not saying that you need to just marry someone regardless of any attraction. You're going to have some other issues there. Um, but make sure that you're putting the importance on the things that are important and the things that are going to last. See, 30 years after you're married, if you make it to 30, 30 years after you're married, are you still going to be proud that that's your spouse? Or are you going to be like a lot of people that don't spend any time with their spouse and they're ashamed of them? That's what Solomon's talking about here, and that's what he's warning his child about. Now, same thing, whether if you're young and single, that's my advice, but also if you've been through divorce and you can't reconcile, now biblically, you should continue trying to reconcile. There are a few exceptions. I'm not getting into that today. But in general, the way that most divorces happen, you should be trying to reconcile. But if reconciliation is not possible, one person's dead or they're, they've already married somebody else or you know one of those exceptions, like they've had a history of committing adultery on you, that kind of thing, if it's not possible to reconcile, then if you are thinking about getting married again you need to have that in mind. And in that case, you already have the example. You already know from experience what a bad relationship is. How about have some wisdom and look for a good relationship as your future relationship? And again, whether that's somebody that's widow or widowed or somebody that just got a divorce, whatever the case, if you're not the single young married, or single young person, but you're in a different stage of life. And when I say young, I'm usually talking about 20s, right? Um, but if you're in a different stage of life, it still applies just as much to you. And if you're already married to somebody and they do make you ashamed, then you focus on being the right kind of person to make them want to elevate themselves and then encourage them. You can't make them change, but you can change, be the right person, and encourage them along the way. So guys, that is it for today. Four verses. I don't know how long this ended up taking, but a shorter video today for sure. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Also, don't forget, if you have gotten value out of this, please hit that like, subscribe, turn the bell notification to all so that you don't miss any future videos. And guys, if you really appreciate this content, two other things. One, you can share this with someone. Share it on your Facebook or one of your other social media platforms. But you can also also financially support this ministry. We could definitely use some better equipment. I've been talking about that for a long time, and God has blessed us along the way with uh, in incrementally better equipment as time has gone on, but there are still some needs, and you know, someday I'd like to be able to support my family as well. So if you would love to do that, we would greatly appreciate it. If not, that is okay. Um, if you are interested in supporting us financially, there is a link down in the description, or of course you can go to simpleservant.org. Guys, thank you very much, and God bless.